In this tutorial, I want to work through the tower engineering example that's included in the PowerPoint slides on binary use of binary constraints. Uh, the Excel file for this uh, problem is also given on Blackboard, so it's easy enough to take a look at that and see how it works. But I thought I'd just sort of build that uh, Excel file up from scratch to show you how we would work on this. The problem that we're presented with is an engineering corporation considering undertaking several projects during the next year. And there's some data given on these. Each of these six projects has a requirement for staff and a potential profit. So we might infer from that that the goal of this problem, as, as it is, is to maximize our profit subject to constraints on our available resources. And it turns out that there are a couple of other uh, constraints that are thrown at us to illustrate the use of binary variables in this context. But for now, let's start getting the spreadsheet set up. And actually, a useful dodge here is you can often take a lot of the data from a problem like this and put it into Excel directly. So we'll just copy that. I'm going to go to a blank spreadsheet here, and we'll go down, oh, say, about here, and paste that in. And we can see that it saves us retyping the numbers. There's a little bit of funny business going on here, so we'll just take that out. Cut that out. Put it in right here. an extra cell there, so we'll just delete that, shift left. Okay, so there are our projects and the data that we need to go with them. Now let's um, maybe insert a couple rows here. We're going to do some decision variables. We'll make these the decision variables. Uh, I like a slightly lighter color of yellow than that. Let's do something around there. That'll work. Okay, those will be our decision variables. And the key here is that when we do a project, we do all of it or we do none of it. This is not like the real estate investment problem that we had earlier in the semester where you could do fractional projects. Here, we're required to do all of it or, or none. So we have here the profitability. And let's put that up top here. We'll cut that out. Um, insert there. And we'll put another blank row in here, because these will be the constraints down here. Okay, here we're going to have our profitability, which is going to be some product of our decision variables, which will be binary, but we don't worry about that later. And our profitability coefficients there. And for now, it's 0. I'll bump that up a little bit. Copy that. Control C. And we've got a bunch of extra constraints to worry about. So we'll, whoops. Let's drag that down a little bit here. This will be our total profit. We can color code it. These will be the left hand sides of our constraints. Then we're going to have to decide what to do with them momentarily. So we can kind of guess that we're going to have limitations on the engineers and support personnel available. So we'll use less than equal to constraints on that. And we'll have a right-hand side over here that we haven't been given yet. OK, so there's your basic setup. A little formatting still to do, but we'll go back to the, the problem now. And we're told that we can't use more than 175 engineers and 150 support personnel. So let's put those in. 
175, 150. Okay, now we're told that if either Project 6 or Project 4 is done, they must, must both be done. Now that's a co-requisite requirement. These are spelled out on the next page. So I'm just going to skip ahead here one. There's our first two constraints. If either 6 or 4 is done, both must be done. So that's a co-requisite, meaning that the decision variables for 4 and 6 must be equal or the difference must be 0. And the easiest way to express it is x4 minus 6 equals 0. So x4 minus x6, and that will be an equal to constraint. And it will have to be equal to 0. Another constraint that they throw at us here is that project 2 can only be done if project 1 is done. This is conditionality. So we say that the decision variable for project 2 must be less than or equal to the decision variable for project 1. And it works out this way if we want to express it this way. x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 0. I could flip that around and say x2 minus x1 less than or equal to 0 and it would be just as good. But I'll take it straight as it's shown here. x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 0. So we have x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to zero. Next constraint, if project five is done, project three must not be done and vice versa. This is a way of saying that they are mutually exclusive and we do that by summing the two decision variables and making sure that that does not exceed one. So we'll do x3 plus x5 less than or equal to one. x3 plus x5 less than or equal to 1. And the final constraint is that no more than three projects are to be done in total. So we're just going to add them all up and say that these must be less than or equal to 3. So 1, 1, 1. We'll do a little formatting there. Get a format that looks good to us. I'm not going to label these constraints, but for good practice you should. But now we're ready to go to, uh, let's just finish some formatting here first. We're ready to go into solver and do the correct setup there. Okay, it's completely blank. Our goal is to maximize our profit by changing our decision variables subject to constraints. Well, the first one we have to put in is that these decision variables need to be binary variables. We're only going to do one of a project. We need to add all of these. So we're simply going to say that our resources have to be less than or equal to what's available. This left hand side has to be equal to this right hand side. This one must be greater than or equal to. Now, if I'd rearranged it, I could have saved myself a couple of keystrokes here. And the last two are less than or equal to, so I'll put them in as one entry. Okay, there's the complete setup of the problem. Now, we do need non negativity, we do need simplex LP. And remember, we do need to go into the options box here. All right, in this particular version, this box is not checked, and that's good. That's what we want. Sometimes you may find it's checked. So here's where you have to uncheck that before you proceed. I don't know why anybody would want to ignore the constraints they put in, but that's the way they set it up. So that's good to go. Click OK, and we can solve. So we got an answer. Have a quick look at it there. It looks at least reasonable on the face of it. No sensitivity report available notice, so we accept that. 
Let's just expand that so we can see it. And it turns out that that is the correct answer. When you get a, an answer like this, look first to make sure that the constraints are observed. That looks good. Then look closely here to verify that these are, in fact, binary numbers. Sometimes solver will get confused if it's unable to converge properly. And once it does that, why is this giving me trouble here? Once it does that, it will sometimes give you non-integer solutions even though you explicitly asked for them. So by all means check those and make sure that they are correct before you accept this as a done deal. So there we have it. That's the tower engineering example in a quick run through. It should look very similar to one of the assigned homework problems.